Kahirlik, and thank you for the presentation. If you don't mind, Kahirlik, I have a series of short questions, and I'm confining them to TransLearner, but I need the answers to um, certain ones in order to be able to tease out some of the things that have been said. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, if we if we are not happy, we'll interrupt. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank you. Now, on the TransLearner um, issue, I, I want to take it in three parts. And first, I want to take it in relation to the FDA and, and what has been said so far. And then I want to take it on the costs specifically and on the data issue. So, in terms just of the FDA and your reference there and uh, um, the, um, the non-approval in, in the US, um, is it not true that most drugs that are put before the most most orphan drugs that are put before the FDA are are not uh, approved in the first uh, in the first instance? Uh, that almost all drugs fail in the first instance, and then additional information uh, is requested at that point. Or could you maybe even in the last year, and I'm sure you'd know these figures, in the last year, how many drugs were approved by the FDA and how many were refused on the first submission? This is orphan drugs. Yeah, on that specific question, my understanding is the FDA is uh, fairly, fairly inclined to say yes to medicines. Uh, and, uh, and specifically in relation to TransLarna, I know it wasn't its first look by the FDA. Uh, in fact, the actual current look by the FDA was a, an appeal by PTC Therapeutics against the previous refusal to accept an application. So it's not true to say then, what you're saying is it's not true to say that the most um, applications for orphan drugs to the FDA are refused in the first instance? I think I'd be pushing to say that I had, that I was, uh, that I was an authority on the FDA. Okay. Um, yeah. We just mm. happen to know what the yeah. TransLearner one, because obviously yeah. we're clearly always looking at the evidence base, looking to sense check any decisions that the HSE has made to make yeah. sure that they yeah. uh, sustain challenges around are, are, are we outliers, are we not outliers, so we're always okay. looking at how okay. other authorities have okay. looked at decisions, particularly when we've okay. made a decision I'm, and a decision comes yeah. afterwards. I'm just trying to get how much weight uh, the FDA carry in terms of the FDA no approval. The FDA so carries no weight. So it's not an automatic for, process no, for no, here. No, so no. really no, the I, th FDA I think in introducing the FDA, yeah. I think yeah. it's important to say this. In, 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 in talking about the FDA, all we're saying about the FDA is here is an authoritative body, international body, with a mm. good, strong reputation for assessment of medicines. Yeah. And it has come to a similar mm. decision as the HSC. Mm. Did the HSC consider the FDA mm. position in it making its decision? Absolutely no. The HSC came to its own decision mm. independently. Mm. Granted, it will then, when you're trying to defend a decision, mm. you will point to the decisions that other agencies have made. Okay. But you're and not using their decision process yeah, as a proxy for okay. your own. That's fair enough. That brings it up. So really, the EMA is the, the body that you would, would, would carry more weight, if you like, because obviously that's within Europe and we're all part of Europe and all that. So I just want to get at, at in terms of what you said, a conditional approval. Is it not true to say that uh, most often drugs that... Um, um, are get that go through the EMA get conditional approval rather than full uh, approval merely because they are new drugs that are being introduced and then the data that's used from I mean there's 400 children across the uh, EU have the data on TransLearner. I have, yeah. I have, I have, I have yeah, can answer you that question clarify? specifically? Yeah, but can you just maybe just, just yeah. clarify? There are 400 children across the EU, 18 of the 22 countries that have the approval um, are within the EU. Yeah, can you confirm that? Sorry. I can't confirm what, how many patients there are for TransLearn across the EU. That's okay. not the data that I would have to hand. Okay. I, well, I know that the company would argue that that's, yeah. would say that's what the position okay. is, but I can't absolutely stand over those figures. We could stand over what's in Ireland, but we can't stand over what's... You don't know how many children in the EU have... We, our, our, our assessments have to look at Ireland, yeah. you know, so we wouldn't be doing okay. an assessment of how many patients across Europe there would be. But we would always be aware of what decision making, we would try to be aware of what decisions were made in all other authorities to sure. try to sense check our own decision. Yes, but not to use other well. countries' decisions as a proxy for the decision because the Oireachtas has made clear the HSE has to come to a decision within the Health Act context. 
Yeah, and I said completely us. understand that, but we don't uh, operate in a vacuum no, no, in absolutely. terms of the EMA, and that has to be taken on board. Can, just, I can I just go back to the question you yeah. asked uh, specifically in relation to uh, how many orphan drugs get conditional uh, approval and mm. how many don't? Um, now, Deputy Burke used the number of 158. There have been 158 orphan drug approvals over the years, but 45 of those are no longer technically orphan drugs because once you lose patent, you're no longer an orphan drug. So as of the 6th of November, there are 113 public assessment reports on the EMA website in relation to what are now the orphan drugs. So effectively, there are 113, technically, there are 113 orphan drugs left in, 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 the, in, in Europe. Uh, of those, uh, 98 have had approvals and 50, 11 have been refused by the EMEA and four have had withdrawn market authorizations. Of the 98, 14 of those market authorizations were approved on a conditional basis, 72 were full market authorizations, and 12 were approved on an exceptional basis. So 76 of the 98 orphan medicines have been approved on a conditional or exceptional basis by the European Medicines Agency, but 72 of them are full market authorization. And, and do we approve uh, orphan drugs on a conditional basis? Have we done that for any other drugs? Um, I mean, could we not? I suppose, and I'll tell you just the context of, of why I'm asking this que these questions. I'm not a permanent member of this committee, but in all our discussion, I am uh, thinking of Lewis Hart Walsh from Castlebar, who was six last Thursday and who desperately needs Translara. Translarna in order for him to continue to be able to walk. So we are talking about two boys, two boys in the whole of the, of the state who are in a position now that would, would, would need this drug and I think we need to bear that in mind in terms of the, the decision making process. So would it not be possible to grant um, a conditional approval for Translarna? on that basis that we're only looking at two, and then use that, the, the additional data that would be available to then either accept or reject? It's very hard to answer. It's very hard to answer a question which the HSE is required to answer on an objective basis in a subjective way, which is basically what you're, you're asking me to do. Um, look. On this side of the table, would we like to be able to provide access to every medicine? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every medicine. Do we like saying no? No, we don't like saying no. We hate saying no. Personally, I hate saying no, but that's, that's the way it is. We are required to objectively, on objective grounds, arrive at a decision in relation to every medicine. The Oireachtas has actually put in place a piece of legislation which requires us to objectively, using the criteria in that legislation, arrive at decisions. The HSC did that with Translarna. Okay. I accept that people don't like the decision. I accept that other people may, people may feel the decision is wrong. But the HSE, to be, in all honesty, the HSC has done its best to arrive at an honest decision okay. in the so context maybe of we'll, the Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Maybe we'll examine a bit on how the process was, was reached, because I know it was rejected on the grounds of cost and of, uh, of data. So um, maybe we look at the cost and the cost that's been quoted. Uh, as opposed to the real cost. And I want to know how much negotiation um, has been done with the drug, the drug company to, um, to come to a, a, a price, a reasonable price on it. And I, know, and I do understand that the figure that was quoted and will be quoted by Mr. Barry, or by Professor Barry, um, is based on um, um, a, a boy, because you'll know a translarna is subject to the weight of the child and, and all of that is, is based on a 10-year-old. So for somebody, say for instance, like Lewis, who is six year, years old, whose weight is, is different, the cost of that immediately would be reduced. And then I just want to get at the crux of exactly what negotiations have taken place on price. Did they give you a price? Then did you go back? How many times did you go back to, um, to get that price reduced? I think we're, we're, what I would say is I, we can't talk specifically about the price. It's not that I don't want to, but the company has made it clear to us in all our engagements that we are not authorised to release the price. 
What I would say is that if you're asking, I can't talk about the price. I can tell you what the budget impact would be to provide access to the patients who qualify over five years, and the budget impact would be in excess of three million over five years. That's the type of money you're talking about. Can I tell you on the price? That, that can I ask one that supplementary question yeah. to, you, to yours, just to follow up. Yeah. Um, have any orphan drugs in Ireland been uh, authorised on a conditional basis? Uh, conditional, we're talk, we have to be careful now because conditional means different things in the context. In the context of what the EU European Medicines Agency is, it's conditional on new studies. Within the Health Act, the HSC is entitled to put conditions on reimbursement uh, with the aim of... In the EMA context? Well, in the EMA context, a lot, as I say, 14 medicines have had market approval. Market in, in Ireland? In, in Ireland, again, what I'm saying is, if you're talking about reimbursement, Conditional means something different. The HSC is entitled to put conditions around reimbursement if it thinks they're in the interest of patient safety or improving cost effectiveness, uh, maximising the appropriate use of an item, or appropriately applying the resources available to the executive. And there are conditions, there are conditions in effect around how some cystic fibrosis medicines are reimbursed uh, in terms of the people have to have the specific genetic mutations and their the EU a conditionality. EMA, Which, sorry, what we're EMA. responsible for is reimbursement. It's, the EMA is completely. The EMA doesn't look at reimbursement. The EMA looks at quality, safety, efficacy. It doesn't have to look at value for money. What we're responsible for is making sure, having to, for medicines that have European medicines authorisation to consider them in the context of the Health Act, which involves us being required to consider cost effectiveness, being required to consider value for money, being required to consider the resources available to us. So. Uh, Mr. Hennessy, just a, a little bit of caution. I suppose I'm going too far down the road uh, that we're going on this particular case, and I, I appreciate fully Senator Conway Walsh's points, and I too have met some of the, the families involved in this, and it's, it's, it's obviously something that's extremely serious for them. But the, the decision has been taken and concluded, obviously, in relation to Translarna and is now the subject of legal proceedings, which is, is obviously uh, something the company is, very is absolutely entitled to do. But having said that, we, the, the, door, the door is never closed to new information and, and our new applications. And uh, the HSE is always in, in, in a position where it wants to um, receive new information, consider new information. But as for the, the, the application process and the decision taken, that obviously is now concluded and is going through another process in another forum. So I understand we, we that. Have, we have the constraints in terms of how far we can go yeah. into that. In a I, I really forum. need to. I just put something on the record, Chair. Just, I should say that any comment I have made mm -hmm. is on the process yeah. behind sure. us. Okay, yes. just to be clear about that, just because yeah. there are... Yeah, sure, yeah, and I understand the sensitivities of it, and the questions that I'm asking are historical as well, in terms of... But I put it to you that there was no negotiations on the initial price that was given. The initial price that was given that you quoted earlier on, Professor Barry, that there was no further negotiations with P PTC around that. It's not true. That's not true. Okay. And what did they take the form of telephone calls, letters? Is there anything in the Meeting. meetings? Meetings. How yeah. many meetings? Uh, there would be one meeting because what we would meet is we would meet. You have to remember these are not conventional negotiations. You have a monopoly on the other side of it. You don't. You don't have things to trade off. We are either reimbursing or we're not reimbursing. We don't have a trade-off in the form of a conventional negotiation. So we would meet the company. We would have prepared for that. Uh, in that particular case, uh, we had our HTA report. We provided the company with our view on what the best chance for the medicine getting through the process was uh, and pointers around where we felt they could improve their offer. It's then up to the company to decide whether it is in a position to do so. And they, we met and we got a formal written offer. Yeah. So you had one meeting, uh, one price quoted, and that was it? No, we had a price quoted, mm. we went through the HTA process, mm. we had a meeting, mm. they quoted a price, we asked them to confirm that was their final offer, mm. they said that was their final offer. They confirmed that that was their final yeah. offer, that's yeah. very important. In the original process, yes, in the original process. As a matter of course, I think, mm. John, the, the agency would call, it would appeal to the companies to to lodge their applications with all of their information, including their final best price offer. Uh, it, 
it, it, it isn't helpful to be coming in for companies to be coming in at a high price and then being prepared to come down subsequent to decisions being taken. All that achieves is delaying the process and keeping a protracted process going when our preference would be to conduct a clean process and have the, the absolute bottom line price on the table from the world go. But surely, uh, surely part of the remit is to, to negotiate on that price, to get that price down as low as you possibly can. And in any world, it, it, it would be not the price that was coming in at, and okay, the expectation that the drug company would come in at a price, that was fair and reasonable. But if in your opinion it's not fair and reasonable, surely it would be then fair and reasonable to go back and over to the company to say, this price isn't acceptable, we need a discounted price. What is your discounted price, not the initial? One. You did ask I, I, for a I think we're getting into dangerous stuff that I have, stuff that I have an affidavit prepared on. So okay. you know, this is getting into fairly ropey uh, areas in terms of the High Court is likely to dis, to look have at this area. Have you any general questions I, in I relation have. to orphan okay. drugs? Because we, okay. we want to bring in some other members. Okay. And yeah, I, and I appreciate it, and I really just don't have enough time to tease everything out here, even in terms of the data. Would you be prepared to sit down um, with the drug company? We are at a situation where th this is unprecedented in terms of, of a drug company taking legal action. God only knows how much it's going to end up costing legally. And I would say far in excess of what Translarna for two little boys would cost. Is there any way that um, um, the HSC would be willing to sit down with PTC before this actually goes to court to try and work this out, both in terms of cost and in terms of a conditional approval, um, albeit that, that there may be uh, additional data. But just to be, so that the peers, so, so that those two little boys could be the same as the peers in 18 other EU countries. It's just very hard for people to understand. I can try and answer that one, Chair, and, and appreciating that the, the application that we're, we're discussing is dealt with and concluded and following a particular course. That said, the HSE's door is always open to new information, is always open to new, uh, new applications. So yes, the door is always open if people want to make further contact. So if any company wanted to make further contact with you, even in this, this, uh, this situation, we, 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 our system, system is we regular, where, where, where we have run into, where we run into, diff, where we run into a scenario where no's are likely, we are tending to meet, we meet, the door is never, a no is never, a no, a no is a no on an application, okay. it's never a no on the specific drug in terms of any drug can have multiple applications if you want to put it that way. We okay, never, so we never put a line in the sand, no, we've looked at that, we're never going to look at it again. We're never in that position. Okay, so we're never just, in that Just position. one more question and we'll, we'll move on to other speakers if you don't mind. Okay. Yes, thank you. I'll just ask you, what, uh, um, uh, what clinical evidence did you take into consideration um, when you were accessing, um, um, when you were assessing TransLearner? Um, Senator, some of these questions are things that are specifically covered by PTC and are questions that the PTC are asking in their High Court case. So I'm really uncomfortable going into it. What I'd what say to you is that all we, the HSE looked at all the evidence submitted. Okay, it really is my hope that uh, you will sit down uh, with the drug company, the only drug company that makes this um, um, uh, drug available, that you will reach agreement so that um, so that these two boys can be treated. And that's all we're talking about. Chairman, again, to thank you very much, Senator. I'm just going to bring in um, 